A daily dose of daydreaming heals the heart, soothes the soul, and strengthens the imagination. It is thought that children have an innocence, an innocence that allows them to break through the spiritual veil and live in a world without self-imposed boundaries. Having an imaginary friend is supposedly a normal and healthy part of childhood play. They can help a child build an interactive world, expand their creativity, and rid them of loneliness. But they're just pretending, right? So what happens when the so-called imaginary friends will do anything to protect their maker? Or is there something more sinister at play? Today, we're looking at Duel, a short horror by Justin Staggs, where a child psychologist attempts a breakthrough with a troubled little boy. Unfortunately, she unleashes the fury of his imaginary friends in the process. Dr. Gabby has been assigned to talk to Jack, a young boy supposedly demonstrating some concerning behavior. As they talk, Jack draws pictures of his supposed imaginary friends and protectors, Mr. Pinky, a fierce clown with fingers of razor blades and glass, and Captain Beasley, the protective but fearsome bear. Both have supposedly been charged with being guardians to Jack, fixing anyone who upsets him. And while the doctors believe the imaginary friends are manifestations of a dual personality, he is accused of attacking his mother invoking the wrath of his imaginary friends, and one by one, they pay the price. Jack, <clears throat> we need to talk about what happened to your mom. What you did to her with the scissors. Jack? Jack? Jack! I didn't do anything! <laughs> adult supervision, we see Jack making his grand escape, only to be pursued by the police, who pay the price for standing in his way. I'm sorry, I can't stop them now. Apparently that protective nature of his imaginary friends doesn't extend to pushing wheelchairs. But is it all as simple as being overprotective guardians? I don't think so. So here are my thoughts. One could look at this movie in two ways. On the surface, we have a child that has clearly endured enough trauma to manifest a way to protect himself. This leads one to question what happened to him that he needs protecting. Is it the reason he's in the chair? Are we witnessing DID or schizophrenia like the doctors think? Or has he done a carry and manifested a new ability? Whatever the reason, the true horror is the trauma this child must have gone through to conjure a reality where he is unable to recognize a helpful adult from one that means him harm. But honestly, I don't think this is the answer. So let's pop over 
to my other theory. This movie explores duality, the doctrine of two independent divine beings or eternal principles. We come across duality every day, peace and war, dark and light, hate and love, good and evil. In the short we see it in the bear, the bear is the shield, harming only out of necessity. And the clown is the sword, harming more out of purpose and desire. We see it in the sun, smiling with Captain Beasley, but the sun is sad with Mr. Pinky. And if you pay attention, you can see it in Jack. Jack is a smart and mature boy, but every now and then, you get a glimpse of something darker, reminiscent of another duality, like Jekyll and Hyde. Don't worry, he likes you. He does? <laughs> but he doesn't like those men hiding behind the mirror. They're not hiding, Jack. They're just... They're hiding. Jack? Jack? Jack! Now finally come and take me home. I'm sorry, I can't stop them now. Honestly, it's given Damien Omen vibes, and I think that's exactly what Jack is. The final piece of the ultimate dichotomy, heaven and hell. As a potential antichrist, this would make the so-called imaginary friends demonic. And there are clues to this throughout. For instance, the sudden increase in temperature as Captain Beasley and Mr. Pinky come to Jack's aid. The very nature of their being, and the biggest clue, the title card. If you look closely, the A of the duel looks a little off. In this case, A is for Antichrist. Can you say Antichrist? You'll notice the A is actually composed of three numbers, seven, four, and one. Now we're more familiar with the number of the beast, 666. However, 741 is associated with Lucifer himself, at least as it's hypothesized by numerologists, alchemists, and Freemasons. In fact, you'll also find it being used in movies, for instance, as above, so below. It was used to locate the gates of hell directly below Paris. And if you've ever been to France, that seems pretty plausible. 741 is also linked to the Devil's Tritone, a culturally referenced musical chord used to infer the Devil's music. Thinking these imaginary friends could actually be guardians of the Harbinger of Death, it makes sense when piecing together the puzzle However, the idea that trauma might actually coax this type of response is truly more terrifying. This short really does make you question what you're seeing. Is it a demonic uprising or a vivid imagination? Either way, it's an enjoyable watch. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you again for watching. And I also just want to give a massive thank you to the Folklore of Being who helped make some of the templates that I've used in today's video, including the one for my outro. So please go and check out her channel. I'll make sure to include her channel in the description box below. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.